Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Lee. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, Lee, are you based in um, uh, West Coast, US? Yeah, I'm Austin, Texas. So, Austin. okay. That's good. Um, yeah. Feels pretty good to say good morning, though. Um, I'm generally, <laughs> uh, generally talking to a lot of folks in earlier time zones and totally and, I, and it's and i've i've found i've been found to be incapable of saying anything but good morning uh yeah. when it's morning time for me and so this is nice yeah that's true so at least um you know sometimes you have to work with your folks and uh the time, timings are crazy <laughs> early mornings yeah. and whatnot so it's good at least we, we get to sync in normal time zone yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't doesn't stop me from drinking coffee um after after the morning now. Elixir for engineers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do -do. Well, uh, so the meeting minutes are in the chat. I'll probably we'll paste those again in a moment or two. I'll go ahead and begin to share the screen. Actually, as we go to do that, if if you're able to access the meeting minutes, um, go ahead and slap your name down. Um, we'll we'll get you on the docket. I would know that background logo anywhere, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. I am. Um, I actually deal with that logo a fair bit. We, um, um, I got to tell you, it's sometimes it's occasionally a pain in the rump because uh, if you're dealing with the SVG version, it's got all the vertices, and if you're not careful with how you drag and um, yeah, you drag it. Over yeah, you could accidentally it. drag all the vertices. I get it. Yeah. That, uh, I feel like I violated a couple of a uh, couple of copyrights or a couple of uh, just, um, rules of how you're supposed to use logos just accidentally. <laughs> well, uh, fair enough. So, hey, um, first five minutes are generally a bunch of bad jokes for me and people being kind, laughing. So. <clears throat> Thanks everyone for coming. We're about five minutes after. Let's let's get up and rolling. So this is the February fourth, twenty twenty one, the CNCF SIG Network meeting, um, public meeting. All are invited. You don't have to be a, a member. Um, you just have to put up with a, a joke or two and hopefully um, speak up. Uh, we're the the things that we we do here, the things that we discuss here, are furthered by your participation. So. So please participate. Um, a couple of you are familiar with this and some of you aren't, so I'll say it. And that is that <clears throat> the CNCF SIG network, um, well, I, well, um, has, how do I be concise here? CNCF SIG network is like other SIGs. 
Um, it also, outside of its own charter, which I won't cover, it also includes um, a, a two working groups at the moment. One is for the Universal Data Plane API, uh, which is sort of Envoy's um, set of APIs, and there's a working group there. There's another working group that's the Service Mesh Working Group. It, um, within it, it has a few different initiatives, and uh, we've agreed over the last few months to use this time to advance the Service Mesh Working Group initiatives, um, unless a SIG network topic uh, bumps it down some. And um, so we'll, we'll speak to a couple of uh, SIG network topics. If any of you have SIG network topics, by the way, um, please put them there. If you have, you know, other, other, if you have topics, now's the time. Uh, we'll, we'll get to them. Uh, you can see a bit about uh, Service Mesh Working Group and its initiatives um, here. We're going to talk about two of them today, maybe one of them briefly, and then spend a fair bit of time on Service Mesh patterns. That's sort of the focus of today. Okay, uh, good. All right. Uh, so first topic up is the uh, ambassador. You're all familiar, no doubt, with ambassador, uh, uh, modern modern uh, proxy that um, has Envoy inside, so to speak. Um, it is up for public review. It's been out for public review for a little while. It's proposed to be adopted at an incubation level. There is some discourse, uh, some happening on uh, the project's name and pot a potential renaming. There's some uh, public discussion there. Um, that's sort of the state of, of, of that proposal. Any, any comments on that topic before we move on? All right, uh, within the, the Service Mesh Working Group, uh, the last two times we've met, we spent most of our time discussing, <clears throat> well, a collection of concerns around, really around Service Mesh performance. And one of those uh, concerns, so there's the Service Mesh Performance spec. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But there's also a project called Get Nighthawk. If you're not familiar with Nighthawk, it's a load generator uh, that was born of the Envoy project. So Envoy has uh, a load generator written in C++. Uh, it's called Nighthawk. It's uh, gaining in popularity and in part to assist its popularity uh, and to help get it into the hands of many. There's an, an initiative called Get Nighthawk to, it has a, a couple of aspects to it. The, the core thrust of the initiative is to create uh, some convenient distributions um, of Nighthawk, of that load generator. And so the last couple of times we've met, we've talked about what the purpose of this project is, uh, some interesting things that Nighthawk is capable of, which is pr pretty, pretty neat. We're bringing in, um, we're partnering with at least one university, and it looks like a second, which would be NYU and a couple of professors at each university to do some, to ask some hard questions and hopefully answer them. So, um, so while we won't cover this project again in depth today, I will highlight that since last we met, there have been a number of um, actions, tasks laid out that community members, you know, contributors are picking up. And I don't know that they are represented on this call today. So I don't, so, or at least of the individuals that have the tasks that have names next to them. So, so next time, next time we'll, we'll touch base on um, Get Nighthawk. And then I think, you know, so any comment or question on Get Nighthawk? Uh, uh, just a comment. So Otto and I got to sync um, yesterday. We had a, a brief chat about um, some of the uh, requirements or some of the things the tool could do in terms of load generation. Um, so we 
we were looking at uh, how uh, we could uh, have a, um, a environment and a st standard methodology to uh, have a consistent performance uh, using some of the tools like Nighthawk uh, so that uh, no matter uh, how many times you run, the latency is kind of consistent. So we're looking at now uh, what are the L2, L3 aspects, what are the things the tool could do in terms of exposing the L4 and L7 parameters uh, for tuning. And uh, so it's, we just started this discussion. So hopefully we'll have some uh, progress there soon. Nice. Oh, very good. Uh, how do I... Good. I'm, I'm keen to hear more on Synco that um, <clears throat> I, I'm, yeah, I'm keen, yeah, maybe I'll leave it at that. Um, hey, we're, we're, I'm overdue to spend some time with you to, um, and, and Otto as well. Um, Definitely. Yeah. I mean, one thing you mentioned seems like um, AWS and uh, followed by Google, they've uh, started a set of uh, uh, standards. Uh, to establish for like some of these benchmarking or deployment, uh, uh, rather I think for benchmarking uh, environments uh, to to have uh, to to establish a met method to measure and also uh, have a consistent performance. Uh, so I'm not sure the details yet. So that's something Otto mentioned he would share soon. Uh, looking to see what what they are. Oh, very good. And are those? Um, I take it that that's separate from the from SMP possibly I, I'm not sure yeah okay yeah, I mean yeah you, you you know SMP well so <laughs> okay okay yeah I'm good uh... yeah so I still don't know yet um so I think uh, uh, we have a follow-up email so uh, we know soon nice good 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 yeah yeah um... Uh, well, so the next topic up is um, service mesh patterns. So this is so one of the initiatives that within the, the working group is, well, is trying to parlay a little bit with there's a there's another service mesh uh, group within the CNCF. It's the end user group, um, and those those folks get together. I think it's about once a month. Um, I haven't attended a meeting. Um, they'd recently invited us to come and collaborate, which is fantastic. We're, um, we're hopeful to listen to a lot of the challenges that they're having with service meshes, um, give that feedback to the projects, um, as well as, well, as, uh, well a, a few things actually. One, get a better survey going on. Uh, all of you have probably seen various CNCF surveys that have been done about the usage of particular technologies. Uh, the one for service mesh is egregiously wrong. And uh, as I go to say that, um, I feel like if people think about it, like that, that sort of feels like the fault of something like SIG Network, like may maybe SIG Network should help with that, help make sure that it's done well. And part of that would be parlaying with that end user group. And so part of discussing with them is also trying to help establish some uh, patterns and some best practices, some, some um, usages of service meshes and um, helping propagate and educate um, current users and then forthcoming, you know, all the, the thousands and thousands of others that will come to use service meshes in time. We haven't spent a lot of time in um, going through these in depth um, here. There's a, a list that, that's shared and kind of categorized. Um, there's some interesting, you know, if you think about the way in which software is written, and um, design patterns. I think that this, the, the approach that's, that's being attempted here is also to, is in the same vein, is to, you know, as people discuss um, circuit breaking, that just as a, a random example. Bunch of what, you know, there's a bunch of considerations around sensitivity of your circuits. You know, when, when should they break? When should they open? How, how quickly should they close back? Uh, algorithms to discuss, you know, patterns of behavior to, to examine. Um, that's probably all context. That's all specific to the context, the applications, the workloads that are running, to the needs of the, the environment, et cetera. Like each of these areas, each of these functional areas within a service mesh um, 
deserve a bit of analysis and a bit of, I'm trying to think of a word other than pattern, um, a bit of promotion of um, sort of the, the common approach, the common use of these things. As we've been iterating on these and working on these and, and trying to educate, what, what's, um, what we've tried to do is come forth with a simple way of articulating, capturing that in YAML. Why is that the goal? Um, it isn't that YAML is the, is the um, that that's the goal because when you're discussing a pattern like this, you're discussing the use of a service mesh agnostic of the underlying technology, whether that's um, you know, whatever mesh that is. Um, because you know, at, this, at this day and age, like um, there's you know, 20 plus service meshes out there. They pretty much all support a retry, okay? So when you, when you give an example and you're promoting um, an understanding and, um, of how many retries you might want to configure um, on your services and the considerations that you'd want to account for, if you want very high resiliency, great, set 100 retries. But there's a negative ramification to that as well. I mean, there's considerations around each of these. And when we give examples of those, it would do a disservice to the other 19 service meshes, if the example is given just for Linkerd or just for console or just for um, whichever. Uh, and so we want to be able to articulate these patterns in an agnostic way and in a, in a simple and understandable way. And, and doing so in YAML um, makes a lot of sense. And th that way they can be shared around as well. People can modify them and tweak them. Well, it's it, one thing to have that YAML um, as a point of reference. And it's a whole nother thing to have that YAML as not only a point of reference, but to be actionable as well, to be able to take that, apply it to a system and have the system um, execute the behavior um, or apply the configuration, uh, basically apply the pattern. Sometimes that's a stattern, uh, I'm sorry, a static application of that pattern, like to just apply a configuration to a mesh. Sometimes that's to, over time, adjust the configuration of a mesh because the pattern calls for, the, like a canary deployment, for example, is like, hey, it's, a, it's an overtime thing or, or an over a certain activity thing. It needs to be or orchestrated. Um, and consequently, um, this leads us to, well, a, a specification like open application model, OM which is taking on a really hard challenge of like describing all the things. Um, let me make a snide remark just for a moment and say, I had said there's 20 plus uh, meshes, actually just um, there's gonna be another mesh announced soon. I don't know that it will make as much of a splash as some of the other ones that have been announced, but, but uh, hold, on to your, uh, hold on to your horses, I guess. Like, there's, there's a 29th coming or whatever the count's up to, so. Okay, so, so <clears throat> we're, we're talking about the patterns, the way to articulate those, to capture that in a, uh, in a succinct way, hopefully in, a, in an understandable, understandable way, hopefully in a way in which doesn't require, you know, 25 um, Kubernetes manifests fully described. So this, this is a, a description of and maybe it's myopic, and if it is, please please comment and please. But a description of a little bit of this this challenge. It's, it goes something like, um, if you want to describe an application and a workload, um, all of its infrastructure, and the way that it should behave. I don't know that there's a single, um, or rather, I would say I know that there isn't a single necessarily a single definition for this. Before Ohm became a little bit popular, and, and Li Zhang, who's who's on the call, and 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 group, and, and the set of contributors around Ohm, there was uh, I was working to, you might chuckle, um, but I was working with uh, some folks at Turbonomics to create another foundation, which is just what the world needed. Um, another sibling to the CNCF. It was it was a really long name. It was oh gosh, uh, application workload definition and performance or and management or and something um, foundation. 
bunch of lawyers involved, a bunch of people involved from various um, tech companies to get that formed. And eventually um, that was set as that effort was set aside. And um, things like Ohm have like, you know, Ohm and, and some other related specs have come forth. And so anyway, um, as we go to solve this challenge around how to take um, how to describe a pattern agnostically and then have a system um, take that. Um, if you're, if we've been looking, you know, the, the challenges here are you can't do all that in Kubernetes. It brings, it lets you describe a lot, but not everything. In SMI, um, it lets you describe, um, <clears throat> well, you know, it, it's a, it, it, as an SMI maintainer, it's fair for me to say this, that it's a, um, like, like every project that's here, it's, growing, you know, it, it continues to add more to its specification. And, um, and so right now it's kind of focused on a lowest common denominator set of capabilities. And that's fine. That's, um, that's um, appropriate. What the spec hasn't yet accounted for very well is a, a really having a, an extensible model for maybe describing capabilities of a given mesh that are differentiated from another mesh that aren't that isn't really you know, common or ubiquitous functionality across the meshes it leaves a little bit of a challenge. I'm not saying SMI isn't a good spec or it doesn't have a set of good specs. That's not the, um, and service mesh performance, SMP. It, it is uh, focused on capturing and characterizing service mesh and workload performance. Um, and so it doesn't capture all of what an application is. Um, and all of what Kubernetes has and all that. So, so you know, we're left with a bit of an, an underlap. The way of, I think, um, visually visualizing this is a little bit like this, that um, to just quickly say, hey, there are, you can describe things in Kubernetes, you can describe things in SMI, some in SMP, there's some amount of overlap between them in a good way. Um, you can describe like if you wanted to facilitate um, something like a canary deployment or um, if you wanted to apply a pattern and have it be affected over time, um, you could describe some of that in a workflow, in a definition. Maybe that's an Argo CD thing. Maybe that's a cadence workflow or temporal or whatever. There's a lot of engines out there. Um, and we'll, we'll leave policies and how you describe things. Um, it, well, uh, or I'll mention this that like, part of what you might define either in a workflow or in a policy would be um, when to, maybe it's the initial application of a, a number of retries that you're trying to, that, that you want to set across all of your services, but maybe there's a policy that needs to be evaluated over time that would say, well, change that, change the retry configuration based on blah, just something. And so our, our hero steps in, I think anyway, which is, uh, kind of where we get to, to Ohm, just to say, um, this is aimed at trying to describe, uh, and Lee, I'm, like, you might want to step in, and, and if, I, if I totally bastardize the, the vision and the definition of Ohm, like you're going to have to, um, which is like holistically addressing workloads and really like a lot of their concerns. Um, the specification hasn't addressed all of the concerns that, that, that are possible, but it has a highly extensible model for building out support for, well, for traits, for building out support for different application and, and workload concerns. So this is what, so we want to do, so, so I'm going to pause there as I think I've characterized kind of the, the challenge. I'm gonna pause there and we wanna do kind of a demo and talk about how it is that um, Meshery as a service mesh manager, a multi-service mesh manager um, is a, a well-positioned tool. It's a tool that was, uh, ha has been originally created for teaching people service meshes and doing it well. And so uh, promoting patterns and having meshery support those patterns falls right in line with this vision. But characterize, but finding, tr trying to overcome the underlap between what you can describe in these various specs has been a challenge. Um, and so part of the, the uh, community there has been looking at Ohm just very recently 
has done a prototype of trying to integrate OM and, and overcome this challenge. And, um, and so we want to do a demonstration where we kind of walk through how the, the two have come together. So, but I've been talking this whole time. So let me, let me pause before we sort of switch modes into demo mode. So, so I'll ask this. So um, Lee, did I, do you want to expand on the definition, the sort of the vision of open application model and maybe introduce it to introduce Ohm to some folks that might not be as familiar? Uh, yeah, I think uh, most part of your saying is, um, is, is, is right, it's correct. Uh, my team member are, are involved in this project. So I can't speak for them, but I think from my understanding, the motivation behind this model is that you will have a way to define your application uh, in a user-facing primitives, uh, which can make it easier for us to manage the, for example, Kubernetes resources uh, you used you need to use for, for example, rollout, or you want to do traffic management because like today you have to manage a bunch of deployment services, ingresses, but how I can use a much simpler way to define all of those things, for example, by providing a single YAML file, which name is application. So that is, um, I think the most important motivation behind this um, model. And of course, just that you mentioned that it, it works for Ideally, it works for uh, any kind of uh, platform, including Kubernetes. Um, actually, it works. For, it it already works on Terraform, and I think some people are working on to make that work with um, CloudFormation. So in that so in that sense, uh, it's more like a universal application definition. Um, so you can define application on top of different runtimes uh, in an easier approach. And uh, I also know that there is integration of Ohm with Helm, which is straightforward because uh, I can use Helm to package those YAMLs into application. And then I use this model to describe that. So I will have a, it's, it's, it, it looks like I will have an application CRD, but under the needs, the application CRD will generate, will use a Helm chart to render your real YAML files. That is also one approach I saw in the community. And I think it's also very interesting, but yeah, just a mention, um, it's essentially a model to make it easier for people to define application, especially if you want to build something like a application platform on top of Kubernetes or even on CloudFormation or something like that, right? Thank you for that, Lee. Um, qu questions, comments uh, on open application model or on kind of the challenge that I was articulating before? So I, I do have a little bit of a thought here. You, you have this statement that just sits badly with me, which is cloud native is hard. And it, it strikes me that that may be true, but it's basically an indication of, of more fundamental errors lower in the stack, right? Because if, you're, if cloud native is hard, something has been fundamentally done poorly down the stack. And I'm not sure that just band-aiding over it on top of that is the right answer. We may need to get to the root of, what exactly is going on that is making this so hard? Because the minimal toil is a fundamental principle of cloud native. And so if we are actually, if what we're basically doing is uncovering that it's hard, the, the one thing that I know never actually does make things easy is band-aiding over lower level mistakes. That always just makes things harder. And so the question I would ask is why is cloud native hard? You've listed a bunch of things here like, why are we dealing with IP tables rules, right? If a developer has to know about IP tables rules, something is fundamentally very broken. Um, you know, those sorts of things. If, if a developer has to actually deal with DNS complications, we've got a fundamental brokenness in the underlying pieces of the platform. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's a valuable input. Uh, uh, but I'm not very familiar with this website, honestly speaking. Uh, it's maintained by Microsoft folks. So I will definitely let them know um, your feedback. I mean, again, that, that's just one of the things that strikes me. And I, I, I'm not disputing the fact that actually all the things they're saying here are true. 
and just saying that yet another model on top of broken is going to be more complexity on top of broken. And so we should ask ourselves, how do you know, what, what is it that actually needs to be fixed at the fundamental level? If your, if your question is about uh, why we need an abstraction on top of that, I think it's basically how the computer science work, right? Well, abstraction so, is fine. Abstraction is fine. Yeah. I mean, the, but the point is, some of what you've got there is literally stuff that should never have been leaked to the point that it is. I mean, the, the whole game, as you said, of computer science is putting the proper facade on it so that you don't have to leak all the, the nitty gritty details of the next layer. But a lot of why cloud native is hard is because a lot of those details are being leaked to a higher layer than they should be. Does that make sense? The, the, the IP tables one it just jumps out at me, for example. Like I think there's, there's your... no reason any developer should ever have to see that. Yeah, and so I, and in some respects, Lee, I don't even know that, well, or the way that I'm internalizing part of what Ed is saying is um, not necessarily direct. It's, an, it's like um, it's sideswiping um, open application or OM, but not, I mean, not in a negative way, but I mean, it's not necessarily entirely directed at OM either. More like, hey, um, in Kubernetes, why in Kubernetes uh, are we continuing to expose um, well, IPs for one, or like, what, why are, why yeah. something is. Yeah, to be clear, I'm, I'm absolutely not taking this way to put on. Ohm is the one who who's identified in my mind problems that are, are not Ohm's problems. They're problems that were created by other people. And it's trying to do its best at the layer that it's not to solve them. But I think somebody should probably also be going down to the lower levels and saying, why are you leaking these completely, you know, these abstractions that should never be leaked to the developer? Why are they being leaked to the developer? Why are you making cloud native so hard? Because even in the case where you do actually not leak inappropriate things, um, there's still value in having higher level of abstractions. Does that make sense? So Ohm is still valuable. It's just something about cloud native is hard just jumped out at me and said, hey, you know, that that strikes me that something's gone seriously wrong. Yeah, yeah. in some respects, yeah, right. It, it means that Ohm is even more valuable if if that's pervasively happening. Um, Although, I mean, part of your other point is like, well, yes, there, there's value in that abstraction, but at some point it's, it's um, treacherous ground for the abstraction to be standing on if, it's, if the ground is, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. It, it, to some extent, it makes, it makes it even more valuable. It's just someone should go back to the Kubernetes folks and say, look, these things are killing people. Why are you leaking some of these details? Uh, I see. So, so I think the point is that we don't, we, I think we, we will try to avoid, to avoid to say that the uh, current approach is wrong, right? I think that is a, that is that is the argument, right? <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot to be said for that, by the way, honestly. So, I, I concur. Yeah, that I it's see. not usually a good way to open conversations. Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah, that totally makes sense to me. Very good. Very good. Um, okay, I'm not entirely sure what this is. So let me, let me see, if we, let's see how this settles on people, if this is the right way of trying to present this. So, so, um, so uh, Ryan Zhang and, and Lee who are on the, have been kind enough to educate um, some of those that are focused on this patterns challenge about Ohm and uh, being warmly welcoming of like of trying to collaborate and help advance some of the traits in Ohm and and um, and so we gave it a little bit of thought, gave it a week or two, and 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 um, are, are trying to use Ohm to capture a to describe a pattern. That mm -hmm. I don't know that the, the color coding here really helps with an understanding, but to, it, it's about it's about yay long in this case. Actually, it's, it's it goes from from out of here to here. And, and there's things that are wrong with it need to be fixed, but it's sort of three sections. It's like, hey, d there's a service match. In this case, Istio is the example. There's a service match with a particular, conf whoops, particular configuration that um, that if you want to execute this pattern, this pa you know, hey, hey, here's a mesh with a config, run that mesh. Um, there's a, the, the, a behavior section, which is about, in this example, it's about a rollout. Um, and describing the, the application that should be rolled out and mm -hmm. um, the characteristics by which 
that sequence is performed. Mm -hmm. um, and in this case, like this needs to be abstracted to something like metrics and not talking about, you know, all of this should be abstract from, you know, the specific. Anyway, if you, if you take that file, you literally take this definition um, and you were to give it to a system that were to integrate with OM, um, this, this meshery system, so you see how this works for us. Um, a juicy diagram to let soak in to your mind. Let me see if I can walk people through it verbally and then I'm gonna hand the ball off to Utkarsh who's an open source contributor that's been, that tackled this pretty quickly and wants to give a demo of it in action. So, so as a service mesh management plane, meshery is um, pretty extensible actually, um, which um, a lot of its uh, approach and vision sort of lines up with, with Ohm in that regard. And that is, um, I'll show this diagram briefly, uh, which is to say that um, each of the components inside of the, this meshery architecture are considered for how you might want to have choice or extend it to do different things. But the architecture itself, fairly simple to the extent that um, it, it, for the purposes of this discussion, it is two things, or, or you know, three things, I guess, whatever, it's five things, fine. But it's, it's a, there's a server. Um, there are individual adapters, one for each service mesh that it manages. And um, those, serv those adapters, when you turn one on, they register the sort of in the sequence here. So they register their capabilities. They register their ability to manage a given mesh with this server. And it, so they register in the, the capabilities registry, if you will. Um, and great, so the system is just sitting here listening, waiting for a user to tell it to do something. So a user comes over, grabs a command line, um, a CLI. Um, so it runs the CLI pattern and it wants to apply a pattern. In this case, you know, retries, or, or I think the demo would be on, on a rollout. So the CLI inter interfaces with the REST API here. It says, well, here's, here's a descriptor, here, you know, here's, a, here's a behavior, here's a pattern, please. Please make that so. Um, taking that simple pattern file, um, leveraging Ohm and its extensible model for having traits and is to take that pattern, um, get it into the Ohm format. Um, maybe I'm going through more details than are necessary here, but basically getting the Ohm format, um, handing that over to the adapter that can interface with Kubernetes, understanding that there's a particular set of operations to, um, to, to execute, tells uh, Kubernetes to do that, sort of it walks through, it creates a, a DAG, a directed acyclic graph uh, to step through each of those, um, each, each part of that, that workflow and, and does its thing. Um, let me uh, let me stop sharing. I feel like I've, I've not explained that uh, very well. It's probably really simple, and I think in concept. Um, Utkarsh, do you want to do you want to try to um, show um, some folks? Yes. Yeah, sure. um, let me share my screen. Okay. I hope that's it. I can see it. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just uh, but start with uh, how the YAML actually would look like. So basically, uh, this is a, a really simple YAML. Here, you're, although the YAML is quite short, you are trying to do a lot of stuff in here. First, you're saying, okay, I, I need a, a, a service mesh. Uh, I also want to do en enable mutual TLS in there. I want sidecar injection. You're also trying to do a rollout in here. So basically, you are trying to define a lot of things in just a single YAML instead of kind of trying to deploy multiple YAMLs just for a few easy things. Uh, I would quickly go through um, what exactly, how, basically I would quickly go through how 
how this exactly works internally. So what happens is uh, machine adapters would come, uh, machine adapters would basically say that uh, I'm capable of doing this thing. So basically they are registering their capability, which is a broad term for uh, a trade definitions, workload definitions, and scope definitions, which are defined by Ohm. Uh, and then uh, now those are stored in capabilities registry. Uh, <clears throat> then a user a user doesn't have to exactly think of what exactly they'd be talking to. That is which adapter they'd be talking to. They can just give in the YAML file that is showed and they can apply it. Machine adapter would create a DAG out of it because uh, yeah, right here you can actually uh, create a, a, a quite complex workflows in here. That is, you can say, okay, deploy Prometheus is still add on, uh, but only do it uh, once you have already deployed it's, it's still as well as you have deployed SVT. You're also saying, okay, do Grafana is still add on, but uh, do it only once Prometheus has been deployed. So, uh, Meshisa would create a DAG of it and will ensure that. Uh, everything happens uh, pretty efficiently. That is, you can do something concurrently. So SPC doesn't, doesn't basically this rollout doesn't actually depends on anything. So uh, provisioning of SPO mesh as, uh, and doing rollouts would be concurrent, while other add-ons would be sequential because you ask it to do so. So now that I quickly start a mystery server because mystery server is going to actually register all of the Meshita would be registering all of the uh, uh, capabilities and basically trade definitions, scope definitions, and those kind of stuff. So, and we'll start up Meshri is the one. Meshita when started up. Meshri for now is, uh, would be responsible for handling the rollouts. Yeah, so uh, all these logs, although it's pretty huge there, uh, basically uh, what happened was when Mystery Adapter booted up, it basically passed on all of its capability, that is trade definitions and the scope definitions, workload definitions to Mystery Server, and it logged it out. And now uh, new capabilities have came in because Mystery registered its capabilities to Mystery Server. Now what you can do is you can run you should be able to run the uh, mystery CTL uh, pattern apply and it's right now on the exp because it's, it's still a work in progress you can apply this yaml and uh, it will basically do the stuff that you ask it to do that is provision is your service mesh and do rollouts so you, uh, if figure out okay uh, prometheus has two dependencies the fauna has that it's doing two things uh, concurrently and waiting for waiting for uh, is to be deployed and then it will go on and uh, provision Prometheus as a SQ add on. And once that is done, it's now provisioning Grafana. And I think it might have completed. So, yeah, you got the message that okay, uh, SPC was created <coughs> in Grafana, Prometheus SQ uh, add on. Sorry, yeah, pr uh, Prometheus SQ add on, Grafana SQ add on. Those kind of things have already been provisioned now. Uh, let's see if it will open the stream. So yeah, uh, we provisioned Istio, uh, Istio version 1.8.2, and that's exactly what we got in here in the Istio system namespace because that's what we uh, defined in the YAML file. Uh, and uh, the rollout, uh, this was the first rollout. So, I mean, this was the first time that the application was getting deployed. So, uh, or we have all of them running at the same time. What you can do here is, again, Basically, uh, right now you can say that the first version that we deployed was uh, uh, returning this. Uh, into, I mean, on on when something goes wrong, it basically returns this. And now you want to say that okay, I want to improve this message. Now you may be willing to uh, do a rollout. You want to uh, basically do a can release. So you would come in here. You would again do mysteries, uh, mystery mystery TDS serving pattern of time. Now a new version of it will be deployed. A machine after the are quite smart, they would say, okay, STO was already provisioned. So it will not provision STO again. It will not provision Prometheus uh, add on again and those kind of things. It will just uh, do uh, basically the mesh, mesh flow would just do canary. And that is exactly what it's doing. So you ask it to do um, direct 20% traffic to the version 5. And that is exactly what is happening. So you are getting 20% traffic to version 5, while the rest would go to the other one. 
for for the time duration that you've mentioned the in, uh, right now this is pretty uh, because it's in initial stages so this is uh, not very advanced but the intention is to be able to define in here a pretty complex thing that is you can, you should be able to run uh, basically provide that okay i want to perform smp in here and if i get p99 250 ms or something then move it to uh let, let it be 40 percent or just move it to 100 percent something like that is it it's in its initial stages so that is why this is pretty uh like rudimentary but uh the end goal is to be able to define those kind of stuff in there and it, because home is also pretty extensible so we, we should be able to do that as you can see that now yeah, basically it has moved 200 percent traffic to version 5 and any comments or so um yeah, did, one of the last things that Utkarsh was just saying is that part of our, okay, so to step back and say, hey, why are we talking about this? Because it's the service mesh working group. We're working on patterns, trying to educate folks, um, trying to help them adopt and use cloud native technology, trying to help simplify um, the, in order to do that, um, hopefully, like, I don't know if it gets much more simple than what Ohm is, you know, is it really enabled around that pattern file, that, that, that YAML. Um, yeah. uh, but to be able to take that, um, tell a system to go apply, like I think the, the rollout makes for an interesting pattern to look at, but it's, it's not the focus. I mean, the, the, the focus here is to have a system that lets people take any one of those 60-ish patterns and leverage them and they, they, to tweak them um, unto their own need, uh, to explore with them, learn from them, um, change them, to begin to establish well, something of a repository of what those patterns are, give them, give them names, um, to, yeah, to, to help people be successful, help people also understand whether or not they're doing it right or not very well or, and, um, Uh, there's a catalog of, and so I'm going to speak on Lee's behalf again, like you, Lee and I've only spoken once for like five minutes. And so I'm hoping that you're pleasantly, that, that, that this is pleasing, Lee. I don't, I don't know if it is to the project, but that um, some of these efforts would ultimately help advance some sort of the catalog of traits that um, the own project is producing. And, and um, the way that Utkarsh walked through this um, demo wasn't necessarily very visual and, that, and that's fine and there's but it, it Ukash, if you bring back up the the ui the mesh or ui again um outside of showing that istio was provisioned so meshery does automatically detect the fact that grafana and prometheus have been provisioned as well um ultimately it will auto not only detect that but auto connect to them and will you know visually um, display the fact that there there is traffic going on that there is kind of this rollout happening traffic between two different versions so mm -hmm. it's not quite there yet yeah I, I actually think this uh, this is a very very awesome idea because we just uh, from Alibaba side we just received from the complaint from customers that that they want to use service mesh by applying patterns, something like you said, patterns to their application. Instead of try to use the virtual service, destination rules, they don't want to use that. So they want to use rollout, want to use um, maybe shadowing of the traffic. So I think the idea of the patterns is really, really amazing to fix this issue. I really want to take deep looking, look into that. Uh, one quick question is, uh, are you, are you folks just uh, implemented your own own runtime? How how that work? Kind of yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. because uh, yeah. here Mishri server actually does the orchestration part. Uh, basically, uh, it orchestrates the adapters to perform the actions that they said that they, they are capable of. That is the trait definition registration and uh, the workload registration. So yeah, kind of. Okay, so what is the definition looks like? Can, can you show me, for example, one trace definition in that case? 
What exactly? Uh, a example of a uh, trait definition. Okay. Um, This is, this is. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, I got it. Yeah, cool. So I, I uh, not sure if it's possible for you to share out the, the project. Um, so we will definitely try to take a deep look at into it. I think this is what we are trying to pursue in the community, especially on the service mesh side. Uh, we're eager to see that there's something which which can be named like pattern or something other, but it will give users a interface like uh, rollout or any other high level abstraction instead of just uh, the, the the virtual service, which does make sense from an user's perspective. I try. I, I'm really supportive for this direction. So let's look deep into this that. I mean, the, the virtual service is a really nice abstraction at the level that it lives, but you're absolutely right. It, past a certain point, you're, you're sort of laying out um, the links in the topology by hand, and, and that's that's too complicated yes. a thing to do. A little complexity. Yes. Uh, it, it's it's actually a really good example of exactly why you need higher level abstractions that are even when you're building on good lower level abstractions. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so good, Lee. Cool. Good. I think uh, <laughs> now we've spoken for all of 10 minutes on this um, initiative. As a matter of fact, like, wow, um, what an amazing thing, Utkarsh. Uh, by the way, for folks that aren't um, familiar with this um, fine young man, he's uh, in his junior year uh, in university and worked on this for all of a few days, I think, or something like I, and it kind of makes my jaw drop. So. Uh, guy I think is built it's made up of JSON is the well done I, I, I dare say he has a future in this <laughs> Not sure, yeah. um, so to, to I think to help to reinforce what um, Lee was just saying about like hey there there's something to this this word pattern or there's something to the that uh, I'm gonna see if I can um, Utkarsh do you mind if I grab the share back from you Yes. I hesitate to say the ball. Uh, I know uh, I know that would be all too comfortable for Ed if I were to talk about WebEx. So, um, the, the, this is a little more, I, I'd rather that I was able to present this probably, you know, maybe I should present it here, is to say um, th these patterns are being, um, there's a reason why there's a lot of forethought given to um, how many there are and what they might look like. And that's because there's a, there's a book that will be in early release shortly. I'm called Service Mesh Patterns. It's gonna go through the first 30 or so of them. We're gonna include the pattern file YAML in the book. And then um, for any, anyone who's reading each of the, the 30 chapters in that first book, they wanna try it out. They can take the pattern file and put OM, put OM to use. You know, go, go do a, a Mesh CTL apply or, and um, hopefully learn and, and be more confident in adopting a running cloud native infrastructure. There'll be a second book, Service Mesh uh, Patterns Advanced, or whatever it's called, to cover the other 30. There's a ton of work to do here. I fear I may end up in a divorce if uh, others don't come to bear. So the reason I make that bad, well, bad but honest joke is uh, is as an invite to others. Is basically to say, Lee, like a ton of things to do with the mesh. Really, they're you know, totally capable. I know Ohm isn't, um, wasn't built for purposes of, of only mesh things, and that's actually what makes it you know very attractive. Like explicitly things outside of Kubernetes, which is where you know the rest of the world is, um, makes it interesting. And so what I'm what I'm kind of saying in part to like what I've been trying to communicate to very poorly to Sunku is there's a lot of initiatives going on. Um, can't wait for people to get excited like Lee is and uh, move these forward even faster. So, but Lee, yeah, so. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think that's um, it's gaining good traction. So you should see more involvement uh, going going out soon. Other 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 comments or, or questions? Um, Utkarsh didn't stay up until one thirty a.m. for uh, uh, for for no hard questions. I know that there's a hard one out there. Did, um, Lee did did. Utkarsh, did you end up showing one of the, the trait definitions that was generated? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I just showed one of the trait definitions. That was for MTA this. Okay. Oh, if you haven't if you haven't checked out Ohm, it's a it's an ambitious project, and is, I think, architecturally, from from my perspective, the extensibility is. Well, it's, it's like designing for performance up front. And it's sort of like designing, it's like postponing security considerations. Like, oh, we'll get to this, oh, we'll get to the performance. That'll come after the features and functions. And I get it. Uh, and extensibility, all the eatables, they like come after. But the thing is, is um, sometimes you got to think about them up front. And I think the own project did. So, you know, kudos to, to that team. So as we go to, to wrap here, there's um, a Amy's on the call and she has um, quite kindly put together a, a mailing list, a sub mailing list of the SIG network. So there'll be a- We're still working on that one. Hold on, it's coming. Oh, okay. <laughs> Remember, like, we, like, we, locked, we looked at it and it was like, oh my God, this is gonna be a huge long thing. So watch this space for more. So, so sh shortly there will be a, um, a mailing list specific to these topics. We've been holding off on, when I say we, I mean all about you and I'm holding off on just unleashing all the me service mesh chatter onto, onto the broader mailing list, which is about core DNS and you know, all of the other, um, all the non-service mesh projects. So. So we'll, we'll put a, um, we'll, you know, no doubt we'll, there'll be a link in here to that mailing list in, in case people want to subscribe. So. Um, anybody, uh, anybody have items that we didn't maybe get to today that um, you know you're going to want to have a conversation on next time? There might be some, some things on, uh, some get Nighthawk things, some SMP things, I suspect. Cool. All right. Uh, hey, uh, two weeks from now, the third Thursday of the month, we'll, we'll, we'll see everybody then. Thank you, Ukash. It was great. Yeah. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye, all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.